this video, we will learn how to solve for the real values of x in this nice exponential equation. Now, pay attention, we're going to use a simplified logic in solving this uh, equation. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to my channel for more simplified mathematics content. Now, to begin solving this content, let's take the value of 100 to the left hand side and to do that we're going to subtract both sides by 100 so this will give us x to the power of 3 minus x to the power of 2 minus 100 and this will be equal to 0 because 100 minus 100 will give us what 0 great now having gotten that the next thing we want to do is to check out a content now let's look at this logic. In this logic, if I have minus 100, minus 100 can be equal to minus 1, 2, 5, right? Plus 25. Now if I subtract 1, 2, 5 plus 25, it's definitely going to give me a negative 100 because 1 to 5 is greater and is carrying a negative sign. So what does that tell me? That tells me that I can replace minus negative 100 with negative 1 to 5 plus a positive 25. So let's get into it. We have our x to the power of 3 minus x to the power of 2 minus 125, right? plus 25 and this will be equal to 0. Great. Now, having gotten this, I also want you to recall something that if we have 5 to the power of 3, 5 to the power of 3 is simply equal to 1 to 5, right? And also, if we have 5 to the power of 2, 5 to the power of 2 can be equal to 25, right? So, what if we simplify 5 to the power of 3 and 5 to the power of 2 for 1 to 5 and 25 respectively? Then, we'll be making a headway to solving this equation. So, we'll have our x to the power of 3 minus x to the power of 2 minus 5 to the power of 3 plus 5 to the power of 2 and this will be equal to zero. Great. Now, you'll come to see that we have a value with exponent three and a variable with the exponent three. We'll bring values with same exponent to a place, and that will give us what? X to the power of three minus five to the power of three, and this will be minus X to the power of two plus 5 to the power of 2 and this will be equal to 0. Great. Now, I want us to do something. The first thing we'll have to do is to take our mind back to an algebraic formula. In that algebraic formula, if I have a to the power of 3, right? Uh, right? Minus b to the power of 3, this can be equal to a minus b, right? And this will be multiplied by a square, right? Plus a b plus b square. That's a, an algebraic formula. Now, if you have this, you also have to recall that if you have a to the power of 2 minus b to the power of 2, this can be equal to a minus b, right? And this can also be multiplied by a plus b. So what if we substitute this into the expression? Recall that our a will be equal to x and our b will be equal to 5. Now let's substitute that into the expression. And if we substitute that into the expression, we are going to uh, find out that this same value is going to give us at uh, this. Now let's expand the expression. We're going to have x to the power of 3 minus 5 to the power of 3 minus 
Uh, over here, we are going to make this to be a negative uh, one, right? Multiply by x square minus five square, right? And this will be equal to zero. Now note something that if you simplify this whole thing, you are going to simply have this whole thing. So that makes it possible for us to use this algebraic word formula for that expression. I hope you get that. Great. Now let's substitute those values into the algebraic formula. First of all, we are going to consider a to the power of 3 minus b to the power of 3. So this is going to give us uh, x minus 5 first, right? And over here, we'll have uh, x squared plus 5x because we have a multiplied by b. Then we'll have plus 5 squared, right? And on the other side, we're going to have a negative 1 multiplied by x minus 5, right? We'll expand that. And this will give us x plus 5. And this will be equal to zero. Great. Now, come to see this. You come to see that these expressions are same, right? So we are going to bring out the common expression. So we'll have our x minus five, right, coming out. And this whole thing, if this whole thing divides x minus five, we're going to have x squared plus five x plus 25 remaining, right? And over here, if this whole thing divides x minus 5, we're going to have a negative x because minus 1 times uh, x will give us a negative x and then we'll have a negative 5 remaining and all these will be equal to 0. Now, if you consider this expression, you come to see that this expression is typical of a zero product rule. So what we are going to do is to equate the value of, as our first case, x minus 5 to be equal to 0. And then we'll also have, as our second case, x squared, which is an a quadratic equation, plus uh 5x minus x is going to give us 4x, right? And then we'll have plus 25 minus 5 is going to give us plus 20. And this is also equal to 0. So we have two cases. And once we are able to solve these two equations, we are going to have the values of x. Now, let's start with this. To solve this, we're going to see that we add 5 to both sides. So we'll have our x minus 5 plus 5, and this will be equal to 0 plus 5. Great. So if this clears this, a value of x will be equal to 5. So the first value of x is equal to 5, which is a real value. Now, what is it about this quadratic equation? If we solve this quadratic equation, are we going to have real values? First of all, let's test that with by finding the discriminant of that equation. That will be b square minus 4ac, where our a is equal to 1, our b is equal to 4, and our c is equal to this, which is what? 20. So let's substitute that as we look for the discriminant. B is equal to 4 to the power of 2 minus 4 multiplied by 1 multiplied by 20. Now, 4 to the power of 2 will give us 16 minus 4 times 20 is going to give us 80. Great. So what would discriminant give us? The discriminant will be equal to 16 minus 80 is going to give us a negative 64. Now check this out. A negative 64 is less than zero, right? So that means whatever solution 
that comes out from solving that quadratic equation will definitely give us what? Imaginary solution and never a real solution. And remember the question, we are asked to find the real values of x. So we are not going to uh, solve this. We are going to neglect it because they are going to give us an imaginary solution. But, but then I want you to use the quadratic formula. Recall the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula x equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b square minus 4ac divided by 2a. I want you to use the quadratic formula, solve this quadratic equation, and drop whatever your solution will be in the description section of this video. And I will be glad to really uh, have a chat with you from that end. Now, the only real solution we have for that equation given to us is x equal to 5. So what does that tell us? That our x is equal to 5 is the only real solution to that exponential equation that is given to us up here. Now let us test to finally uh, confirm that that value of x is right. x to the power of 3 minus x to the power of 2. If we substitute the value of x equal to 2, will it give us 100? Let's see. We have uh, x to the power of 3, right? Minus x to the power of 2. If we substitute that, will the solution give us 100? Let's test. We have uh, 5 to the power of 3 minus 5 to the power of 2. Now, will it give us 100? 5 to the power of 3 is 1, 2, 5. Minus 5 to the power of 2 is what? 25. And 125 minus uh, 25 will give us 100. So you see, 100 is equal to 100. And that simply tells us that x equal to 5 is the only real solution to that exponential equation that is given to us up here. I know you did enjoy watching this math solution. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to my channel for more simplified mathematics content. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye for now.